frequency distribution. Here the data is represented in the tabular form. And the next point is that here the collected data are arranged in an ascending order. And then the frequency distribution is done for relating the measurable characteristic. We know that we will collect only quantitative data even if the data is qualitative we will convert that into values. So that data that is a quantitative data are related using the measurable characteristics here. And then we know that there are two types of variables one is discrete random variable and the other one is continuous variable. If the frequency distribution is done for discrete random variable we will call that distribution as a discrete or ungrouped or simple frequency distribution. But if that is done for a continuous variable we will call that as a grouped frequency distribution. Frequency distribution of a variable. The frequency distribution is done using 6 steps and the first step is the for finding the range value of that variable. So range value in the sense we have to find the difference between largest value and the smallest value given in the data. And the second step is that we have to find the number of classes for the discrete variable. So number of classes is found and then the next step is finding the number of class intervals. So the third step for finding the number of class intervals we will be using a formula that is number of class interval into class length is equal to range. So we know the range value and the class length is also given in the question. So we can directly find the number of class interval which will be equal to the range value divided by the class length. We will see the other steps in the next slide. Frequency distribution of a variable. So the remaining steps are we have found the range value, class length and the number of class intervals. Now we have to present the class or the class interval in the table. Now we call this table as a frequency distribution table. And the next point is that we have to apply the tally marks. So tally marks is applied for the data that were collected from the question. And the last step is that now we have to collect count the data that is given in the tally marks session and then we have to form a frequency column. If from this frequency column we will be getting the total number of observations. This should be checked through the data that is given in the question so that the observations are done correctly and the frequency distribution is also formed in a correct manner. After this six, table, 6 points are completed, you will be completing the frequency distribution table. So we will solve some problems on this concept. Example number 1. The question given is following are the records of babies born in a nursing home in Bangalore during a week. And here B denotes boy and G denotes for the girl. So they have given how many boys and girls are born in that week in the Bangalore and we have to construct a frequency distribution according to gender. Okay, now solution for this problem is first we have to count the number of male births and the number of female births present in this information. So that for male births we have to count the number of bees present here and that of the female births we have to count the number of G's present here and then we have to form a frequency distribution table but if you see here, here the information given is a qualitative information but we have to change this as values and then only we can substitute in the table because we will not write the qualitative data in a distribution table. So we will see that table in the next slide. Example number 1, the continuation is we have to form the frequency distribution table. So we have collected the data and we have changed the number of male births and the number of female births from the qualitative data given in the question. So now forming the table, there are two columns, the first one is a category and the second one is the number of births. So we have two categories that is boy and a girl. So in the two categories there are 16 and 14 births respectively. 
So boys there are 16 and in the girls there are 14. Now if you see the total of the births in a week in Bangalore in that nursing home it is equal to 30. Now this is the frequency distribution table for the problem. Example number 2. The question given here is a review of the first 30 pages of a statistics book reveals the following printing mistakes and the number of printing mistakes per book is given in the column and the now we have to form the frequency distribution table for the printing mistakes. Now the solution for this problem is first we have to consider the variable. So considering the variable as x here it is a discrete variable. So we are going to construct a discrete distribution table. Now we have 7 values for the x that is it starts from 0, 1, 2 till 6. So we have 7 values for x. Now we have to construct a frequency distribution table by using the values given in the question. So we will form the table in the next slide. Example number 2 continuation. So now forming the frequency distribution table for the number of printing mistakes in the first 30 pages the table is as follows. Now there are 3 columns. The first column is the printing mistakes. So this we have to write it in the order and the next column is tally marks and then the frequency. So here first writing the printing mistakes from 0, 1, 2 till 6 values it is a Number of rows here is 7. So we have written it and then applying the tally marks. If you see for 0, there are 5 times 0 repeated in the data given in the question. So applying the tally marks for it and writing the frequency. That is you have to change the tally marks to numerical values and write it in the frequency column. Likewise, for if you see for 1, there is 5 number of 1s in the uh, given data. So that we have to write it in the frequency column and then if you see for 2's there are 6 number of 2's in the data that we are writing as a tally marks and then also as a numerical value. Now if you see we have to add all the values in the frequency table and we have to check with the question that whether the data we have applied is correct or not. Now we, we have 7 classes and each class is comprising of the single value. Now this is the frequency distribution table for the given data. Important terms part number 1. So these are the important terms that, uh, that we use in the frequency distribution table. The first one is the class limit. Class limit will denote it as CL or C. Here the minimum value and the maximum value will be there in a class limit. So minimum value we call that as LCL and the maximum value is called as UCL. And the, this, con, this is contained in the class interval. So a class interval if you say for an example there are 5 number of persons in a height of 150 to 160. Now this 5 is written in the frequency column. And here the lower limit that is the LCL value will be equal to 150 and the maximum value that is UCL will be equal to 160. So these are the value that is used for the class limit that is contained in the class interval. And the next heading is the class boundary which we call it as CB. So here the actual class limit of the class interval is taken and for finding the class boundary that is for first one. LCB is the lower class boundary which will be equal to the lower class limit minus D by 2 and if you write for the upper class boundary it will be equal to upper class limit minus D by 2 and here the difference is nothing but the difference between the lower class limit of the next class interval and the upper class limit of the given class interval for which you are going to find the class boundary. Important terms part number 2. The next heading is the midpoint or the mid value or the class mark. So here the total of the two class limits or the class boundaries divided by 2 is called as the midpoint value. So midpoint is equal to LCL plus UCL divided by 2 
or UCB plus U LCB divided by 2. So, this is how we will calculate the midpoint value. And the next one is the width or size of the class interval. So, width of the class interval is the difference between the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary of that class interval. And the next one is the cumulative frequency. So, here it is the number of observations that is less than the value or equal to the class boundary. This value we will call it as cumulative frequency. Important terms part number 3. The next important term is that frequency density of a class interval. This is a ratio value and the ratio is taken between the frequency of that class interval which is to be found to the corresponding class length. And the next one is the relative frequency and the percentage frequency of a class interval. This is also a ratio value. If you consider about the relative frequency, it is a ratio of the class frequency to the total frequency. And then considering about the percentage frequency of a class interval, it is equal to the ratio of a class frequency to the total frequency and it is expressed in percentage so that we have to multiply the given answer into 100. So, or you can tell it as percentage frequency is equal to relative frequency into 100 because here the only one change is that we have to convert the frequency into a percentage value. 